Well, first half of the season in the books, nobody more impressive than Clayton Kershaw during his 41 inning scoreless streak. He is part of the reason that runs per game across the big leagues this year. It's lowest since 1992 when the average runs per game was 8.23. Now let's talk about batting averages. Johnny Cueto of the Reds leading the charge this year, holding batters to an MLB best 181 average. Pitchers holding batters to a 252 average on the year. That is on pace to be the lowest since 1972 when teams batted 244. Uh, but where pitching has been more dominant than any other category this year, that would be strikeouts. David Price leading the way. Uh, League-wide, the average sits over 15 Ks a game. That is the highest rate in the 139-year history of Major League Baseball. Not too shabby for the first half of the season, heard through one man's voice. You know, the Yankees, the Giants, and the Dodgers, they all had a New York state of mind when Vince Scully became enamored with baseball. Three teams in his backyard as an eight-year-old. But it was the crowd that won him over. Nearly eight decades later, he is the one who wins over the crowd, time and time again. 65 years, his voice has been the Dodgers' voice. He's called 20 no-hitters, four perfect games. He spins numbers into stories. And for that, well, we are all thankful. Hannah Storm puts the legend in focus. California baseball. Billy Joel sang about it in his number one hit back in 1989. We didn't start the fire. And Billy Joel knows what's up because that's the story as the season resumes tonight. California baseball. The Los Angeles Dodgers, led by the dominance of Clayton Kershaw, sit atop the National League with a 54-43 and 43 record, while the San Francisco Giants, well, they're just one game back. And then you got over in the American League. The story remains the same. GM Billy Bean's Moneyball approach has the Oakland A's and MLB best 23 games over 500, but the Los Angeles Angels, they are hot on their heels. Just a game and a half back in a race with huge implications because of the two-team wild card format. For more California love, we send it over to Kevin, who is with Doug Blanche Staley, but some other Niners, they have some players that have some contract situations. And let's start with Staley's line mate, Alex Boone. What's the likelihood he's going to be in camp? He's been through the NFL draft. He's been in New York since 1965. And Roger Goodell said yesterday, the league's moving it now to either Chicago or Los Angeles for next season. Which of those cities is going to get it? And could there be a link with LA and a team? And more from Dan today on NFL Insiders. That's at 3 Eastern. They've expanded. It's time to get back to the grind. Back they are an hour. an hour now. That's going to be on ESPN2 today. Dallas Cowboys, because apparently, Brian, optimism running high right now with the Cowboys, mm. especially with their running back, DeMarco Murray, because when he was asked if this is the best team he's been on, he said, I think you can say that. Yeah, from the leadership we have and the young guys, I think you can say this. Can this Cowboys team be better than 8-8 eight eight this year? Uh, 18th, 1999, unique place in sports history. It represents the complete spectrum of emotional triumph. On one end, there is David Cohn, who described his head being on fire while flirting with perfection on a steamy 98-degree day in the Bronx. With Don Larson in attendance, Cohn needed only 88 pitches to join Larson and David Wells as the only men in Yankees history to throw a perfect game. Thousands of miles away, the story would be light years different. There is the other end of that spectrum Kevin's talking about. Jean Vandeveld on the brink of capturing the Open Championship. Glory would elude him. History would not, because what happened on the championship's 72nd hole will never be forgotten. That image is remembered as Tom Rinaldi in a feature that originally aired in 2007. Tournament style tournament of NBA teams and potentially teams from around the world. So a lot of innovations in basketball these days, right? New ideas. We love it. Good afternoon. With that, we say welcome into Sports Center with Bram Weinstein. I'm Sarah Walsh. Despite his campaigning, Kobe Bryant, he's still without a coach. Mark Stein tells us what the holdup in Hollywood is. And we do know the name of the coach of LeBron and the Cavaliers, but about it. Give you an inside look at the man who's expected to win a title before he's ever coached a day in the NBA. A sports center. That's why the golf's been over for a while. There was a historic change to the alteration of how they posted the pairings. They used the first tees and the tenth tee over in Liverpool today because they wanted to beat the rain. 
but all of that's got nothing for the Rory storm in Liverpool these days. Rory McIlroy is trying to go wire to wire for what would be his first British Open championship and his third major victory. Today's round started early, wrapped up quickly, and this Open championship may be over faster than anyone could have imagined thanks to the way that McIlroy has dominated. Scott Van Pelt anchors our coverage from Royal Liverpool. There's 16 seasons between them, a combined total of four playoff wins, and both of them still chasing that elusive ring. A year ago, when Ron Jaworski unveiled his quarterback rankings, Philip Rivers was ranked 17th. And Jaws said then, I would expect a better, more consistent Rivers in 2013. Prognosticate and you shall receive. 32 touchdowns thrown. That was his most since 2008. And it's got Rivers vaulting up the rankings from 17 a year ago to 7 today. Matt Ryan comes in right behind him after throwing a career-high 17 interceptions. Jaws unveils his 7th an eighth ranked quarterback. Isn't it always a lot coming from Stephen A. Smith? If Love is traded, he's going to become just the fifth player in NBA history to change teams after averaging at least 25 points and 10 rebounds the prior season. The first to do it since Shaquille O'Neal left the Magic for the Lakers in the summer of 96. And the Cavs may want to ponder this. All four of the players currently on that list went on to win at least one title with their new team. Shaq and Kareem with the Lakers, Moses Malone as a member of the Sixers, and Elvin Hayes with the Bullets. If Cleveland does acquire love, his addition would mean the Cavaliers added two of the league's top four scores from last season. That's something that no team has ever done in an offseason in NBA history. Push off the World Cup love. It is hard to upstage Clint Dempsey. But the U.S. star may not have been the most beloved member of the Sounders, at least at their home field on Saturday. Yeah, Xander Bailey had hoped to be a pro soccer player, but cystic fibrosis stole that from him. He's been dealing with it since he was a child. There was one exception to this, though. The Sounders signed him to a contract. They let him train with the team and his favorite player, Dempsey. Then yesterday happened where apparently Xander's goals weren't all that unrealistic in a football receiving court, and yet there was some weird offseason discussion about whether Brady star doesn't shine quite as bright as it used to. Jaws knows better than that. We haven't seen Brady in this countdown yet. And we won't see them right now either. We have reached the final four, however. Today, we are unveiling another pair. One quarterback that got his team back on track and into the playoffs last season. And another who had a late season comeback of his own. Here's Jaws number three and four.